how, I wonder, faith is the substance of things hopeful. The writer to the Hebrews is talking about people for whom the future, in a significant way, affected their present. I, I don't know how you got on on New Year's Eve and how many resolutions you made. Um, I, I don't know whether you planned your holiday. But maybe if in a fortnight's time you were going to Bermuda and you, you got your, your beach shorts ready and your, your, your sun cream and you were really, really looking forward, I, I dare say that the expectation of what was coming would give a certain lightness to step. You probably wouldn't worry that it was going to be raining all day today, quite in the same way, because the future was something which was just giving life to how you are today. And uh, that, I don't know if you've read Pilgrim's Progress or even heard of Pilgrim's Progress, but Pilgrim's Progress, John Bunyan wrote this, this book, quite a famous book in his day, in it, for a couple of generations, um, about a man who was heading to heaven. And, but the picture is of he was heading towards heaven and the celestial city was in front of him and as long as he kept his eye on where he was going, it almost seemed to cast a light on the path that was in front of him. The problem is that we can live today as materialists and, and as people that think that today is really... Because well, that's how the world around us lives, the fashion of the day, the uh, opportunity of the day, the achievement of the day is, is what motivates 90, however many percent of people, um, but here the, the writer to the Hebrews is suggesting a better way of living so that what is to come shapes what we do today. And that I'm not going to talk particularly about Noah, but it, it's a great illustration. Because he believed something was coming, he did something today. It, it actually influenced his agenda, his priorities. He got his hammer and his saw and his nails and got some wood together because he believed that tomorrow was going to be different to today. And then we come to this famous verse really, faith is the substance of things hopeful, the evidence of things not seen. The, the word that's used there, the substance word, it's used twice before this in Hebrews, once very famous word for you Greek scholars, that that is talking about how Jesus is the same substance of the Father. It was the word that was used to say, well, yes, Jesus is God, just like the Father is God. It, it, but it's used elsewhere to say, well, yeah, but it, that it's also the substance that what we have here is a kind of taster of what we're going to have there. And it, it can feel a little bit ethereal and uncertain, as if, it's less substantial. But here the writer is saying that our faith in the Lord Jesus and all that the Lord Jesus has promised is like a down payment. That the giving of the Spirit into our hearts in Ephesians 1 says the same thing. It's an earnest of an inheritance. Or it's a down payment. There's something begun in the heart of the Christian now which is just as substantial as that which is coming. And faith, in this sense, is living in the light of what is coming and let what is coming affecting your today. We're talking, thanks ever so much for praying for me. I've done cancer three times in five years, so that's why my complexion is so good. It's done something to my... Anyway, and uh, I, I was just talking about... The, the, some years ago when the, the, I, I was in the Heath in Cardiff and it was expected that I would die by the weekend. Um, they'd call my family, that uh, there were more consultants around my bed than nurses, which is not a good sign. And, uh, and, I, and it, it occurred to me that, I think it was on a Tuesday, I, I, I may well be in heaven on Sunday. And uh, it's amazing, just that. Do you know that Jesus has loved me so much? The atonement was everything just at that moment. And the future of where I was going just cast a sense of, wow, I, I was quite excited at the prospect. Curious 
wondering whether it would be like I'd imagined. And it just, in the place of death, the future cast a, a certain light. But how does it work? This is my question. And that the, the, the front, the, 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 the liner at the top, the first verse, faith is a substance, the, the sure reality of what we hope for. He then starts to illustrate that with a string of people. And uh, I didn't read them all. If, we do, if you've read Hebrews 11, you'll know there's a whole raft of them. Um, but the one that he highlights three times is Abraham. And actually, right the way through the scripture, Abraham is held up as a man who really got believing sorted. <laughs> he believed God and it was counted to him, put to his account for righteousness. And here the writer to the Hebrews again, and Paul in Romans and Galatians, he quotes that. So he's held up as somebody who models for us what believing means. Uh, and then the writer of the Hebrews, on three occasions, says, by faith, Abraham. By faith, Abraham. Three times. So that kind of helps me. How, how does faith work? How is it supposed to work for you and I to trust God and his promises for today in the light of what is coming in the future? Uh, and the, the, first, the first of the by faith is in, in verse 8. And it's a reference to Genesis 12 of when Abraham, he's got to Haram, he's going round the Fertile Crescent and he's got to a, a place and he's stopped, or his dad stopped, and uh, he just put his, his roots down. He, he was a wealthy man. He had a lot of stock. He, 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 he had servants, unlike some farmers, um, <laughs> that, uh, and he just comfortable and settled. And then, while he's in that, oh, I like Aaron, go. And he went. Uh, and th this is, the, this is the, f the first thing, that just how, how the Lord, faith is something that where we start to take steps for God. If this is true, then, I'm therefore, I am must. must have been a very difficult conversation with Sarah. Please don't, I'm not going to give, I'm going to look as if I'm giving Sarah a hard time as if she's some kind of dragon. But I don't think necessarily she was. But it must have been quite, oh hello dear, how was the day? How was the stock? Fine, fine. We're moving. We're moving? Yeah, God says we're moving. What do you mean we're moving? No, we're, we're, we're going, we're, we're going west. Where? I don't know. Well... What, what about the family? I don't know. What about the, what about the sheep? Can they go? I don't know. So you, you're saying that we're up in six and we're shoving off into the, into the sunlight and you don't know where we're going? No, no. Well, why, are we, why are we moving? Well, God has said we should move. He spoke to me very clearly. <laughs> and so we are up and off. And there's something about faith, isn't there, where I just have to take some steps. You know, and I'll look at you. <laughs> <laughs> right, just, just I, I engage my eyes. Yeah. We'll do it this way. If you sense in your heart that God is saying, do this, are his promises, are the prophecies, is all this stuff about heaven and God's, is it sufficiently substantial for me to step onto it? That's the first thing that I think Abraham is telling us, that faith isn't just a nice little idea in my head, a kind of a creed, a faith is a confidence that if God has said this, I can safely do it. And that can apply in various ways, can't it? It can be, you know, just the sense of call to church planting that you feel deep down and you know it's going to shape your, your future and you couldn't live by doing anything else. But it could also just be the nudge to go and see the student over there who you just feel you should go and talk to. And we, we just, whether it's a nudge or a call on my life, if I sense that God is saying something to me, I have to take a step. But actually, 
believing, becoming a Christian, the step, that the step is the first thing. Repentance isn't wearing sackcloth, being miserable and going, going around bemoaning yourself. Repentance it means a change of mind. It means that I was going this way, going my own way in life, and that I, I realise now that that way is going to ruin me. That my, 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 the outcomes, the, what I will reap in my life if I carry on that way will be disastrous. So I've got to turn. I, I've got to stop going that way. I've got to go God's way. I've got to take a step. And repentance is actually a step of faith in, the, in so much as it's a reorientation of my life. So I've, I've got to rethink this. I've, been, I've, I've just got it completely wrong. If God is who he is, and has said what he said, if what is coming, if going that way is a, is, is a road that leads to destruction eternally, I've got to rethink it. I, I, I can't be so stupid as to go, I, I must go, I've got to it. So that's the first thing he says, is that faith is a step towards the future, that, I, that is, is true. Secondly, that there's something illogical about faith. The, the second, um, by faith, Abraham, is in verse 8. By, by, sorry, by, by faith, Abraham, when called to go... No, it's not, it's verse 11, that's better. By faith Abraham, even though he was past age and Sarah herself was barren, was enabled to become a father. I suspect he had difficulties with Sarah on this one as well. Do you? I mean, she was 90. The menopause was ancient history. That she, my mother's 92. And I don't want to be in any way destruction disrespectful to my mother, but she doesn't look like she did when she the day she was married. She has a photograph of the wedding. She's she sagged a bit, wrinkled a bit, and she's aged. She's still my mum. But there are seasons in life, and for Sarah, this wasn't it. Oh dear, we're going to have a baby. Get over yourself, Abraham. I, what was the conversation? I mean, it must have been weird, because they, well, anyway, I won't go into the details, I'll leave that to your imagination. But he started talking about a baby. Now, to, in, in one sense, faith, he might have, it might have sounded really, really odd. And some people use faith as an excuse for being weird. Some Christians behave in ways and do things and say things which are just, just idiotic. I, I don't think Abraham was being idiotic. He just had such a clear sense of what God was saying. We had to go with it, even though it seemed irrational. And so he had his chat with Sarah. But it, it was a tough call. It must have been... I mean, how many years had they lived with a sense of disappointment? And, and Romans 4, Paul writing in Romans chapter 4, verse 20, No distrust made him waver concerning the promise of God, but he grew strong in faith, as he gave glory to God, fully convinced that God was able to do what he had promised. Now, faith edges here, doesn't it? Challenges me. Not, not only is, is, can I step onto what is unknown, but can I trust God for what really does seem unlikely or improbable? or unreasonable. If the Bible says this and everybody else in the world today is saying that, can I trust God? Now there's a sense in which, if I can, that Abraham had to look at God, not look at Sarah. And sometimes when we're just trusting God for the impossible, we have to look at God and keep his word in focus, not look at Sarah and all the reasons why it could never happen. And I, I, I don't know what your, your needs are, what your circumstances are. But sometimes, in trouble, we have to look at God, not look at Sarah. Because faith actually trusts God for what is just not possible. But you, 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 you could almost say that, that becoming a Christian 
is in the same terms. It, it, before I was a Christian, I wasn't a Christian. I, I, I wasn't a Christian. I played rugby hard. I didn't think it was unreasonable to be called a sadist. I was just playing second row. You know, how else do you play rugby? So, the, but for me, to get myself into a position where my sins were forgiven and where I would not be uncomfortable before a holy God, just impossible. You know, I, I, I could never sort out my own past, ever. There's too many things that where guilt and a sense of just regret is too strong. We live like that. We, we all have consciences. And if it was going to happen, it's a little bit like Abraham having a son. It has to be God. I mean, God has got to do this. There's no way that Abraham, Abraham and Sarah could have a child of naturally, well, naturally it would have been natural, but the, physiologically the, the, the thing was impossible, but it was impossible for me to know God as well, unless Jesus had come for me and loved me. And reconcile me. Whereas that one of the one of the, the overriding thing when I was I thought I was going to be in heaven on Sunday was just how amazing that God had loved me and made atonement and Jesus had come and borne all my sin, cleared my record, so I can be I can go ahead towards heaven without fear. I still remember the sense of wonder that Jesus had sorted out my guilt and regret. <laughs> I still remember it. It was impossible. And yet faith believes that what God has done and God has promised, we can safely put our trust in. Deliberately. The, 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 first, the third by faith Abraham is in verse 17. By faith Abraham, when God tested him, offered Isaac as a sacrifice. He who had received the promise was about to sacrifice his one and only son. I mean, how gut-wrenching must that have been? What did that bloke go through, the turmoil inside? I know he was going to have to face Sarah when he got home. You know, and he must have had to... Well, where is he? Where, where is Isaac? Oh, uh, uh, uh... I mean, how difficult would that have been? Before, the, before he saw the lamb in the thicket. I, you know the story? He had to go up to Mount Moriah, take his um, son with him, to, to offer a sacrifice, and then on the way, the Lord intimated that it, it was his son he was supposed to put on the altar and sacrifice as a, and he, he had this crisis of thinking, dare I do what God says because it's going to cost me horribly. And just that, surely Lord, you're not asking me to do that. This is going to take everything. If I was to obey God, this would cost me everything. And he went through with it and just at the point when he was going to do the, the unthinkable, God, the angel said, no, 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 just testing. <laughs> there's, 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 the, the, the offering is, in, is caught up in the hedge over there. But there, there was something very alien, but Jesus talks in Matthew 16, doesn't he, about losing our life to gain it. But there's something about faith which tests us as to whether, as to who God is. The, it, it says that, Ab that God was testing Abraham. Abraham had to come to the place where he was prepared to do what God wanted and trust God with the consequences. And it, it would have gone entirely, entirely against what we're, his comfort zone. How do we describe it? it? God would be challenging him to do what every
everything within him would say, I don't want to do it, but I will obey. And happily Abraham came through with flying colours. But James 1.3 says that, you know, that our faith will be tested. It will produce endurance. And, and Paul, in writing to Timothy, talks about him fighting the fight of faith. And to, to decide for ourselves who the king is. Because again, becoming a Christian has this element as well, does it not? That I become a Christian when I realise I'm going the wrong way. If I carry on in the way that I'm going, I'm in putting my life in ser eternally in serious trouble. I need to turn. Yeah, that, that's part of becoming a Christian. I, I can't do it myself. I must have Jesus. I must have a saviour to do this for me. I can't even begin to do it. But I can trust one who has done all, who will do all, has done all that is necessary. I will trust the unseen because of his promise. But there's also a sense in when Jesus calls us to follow him that there is an element of sacrifice and that, that we have to decide who the king is. That one of Jesus' messages was about coming into a kingdom, coming under someone's reign. It isn't while I become a Christian, have my sins forgiven and carry on doing what I wanted to do before. No, 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 no sorry. That uh, he calls us to be disciples. And sometimes that will test my faith as to whether I'm really willing to do the stuff, however much it goes against the grain, I will do what God wants. Which is precisely what Abraham did. And I trust that if we haven't, that we will think about for our own lives as, as whether I will take that step to go God's way, whether I will trust the Lord Jesus to do for me in forgiving my sin and reconciling me to his Father, because otherwise I am in, a, in conflict with God, that's my natural position, um, that Jesus will rescue me from that. <coughs> And that, that I will make him my king, live my life for him. Though all of those steps important for us, but almost in, important for us not only to become a Christian, but to live as a Christian. Are the promises of God the substance of things hoped for? Is what God has said, is what the, the Bible promises, it is all that... Jesus and the Holy Spirit has recorded here, I, am I confident? I, am, am I assured that this is substantial? That I can make the calls and make the choices and if, I, if I'm resting on this, I'm in a safer place than if I go contrary to it. Thinking of the Maker's instructions. If these are the Maker's instructions, can I live my life letting what God has said, what, let, what God has promised, what is prophesied, be the shaper so the future affects my today? Bye. Lord, there, there will be occasions in this coming week. There will be moments, maybe, for some of us where we realise that the, the trajectory of our lives is not the right one. It's not heading towards you, it's taking us away from you. Our priorities are just wrong. And we need to just take the turn and set off, as Abraham did. Pray, Lord, that you'll help us just for the repentance, almost to be a positive. This is a, just a much better way to go, and I will turn to you in this. And that, Lord, in this coming week, not only for forgiving our sins, but we might live with an expectation, whether it's our health, whether it's the, the difficulties that we'll face this week, Lord, I'm going to trust you. You are the good shepherd. I, I'm putting my life in your hands. I'm living with an expectation of your goodness. And that we will so order our time, order our priorities, order our resources, that Jesus will be our King, our Master. That we will 
just put him first, even though it hurts, that he might be honoured in our lives. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much for coming.